I've interviewed all winners of the FNCS Qualifier 2, and this is what I learned. Please like the video if you liked the video, and subscribe as well, and use code RESUB in the AIM shop. Let's get into it. First region that we're starting off with is the Asia region. And this was won by, I apologize, I'm going to say these names wrong, but Shunxian, Rirukun, and Yama. These guys dropped in Catty Corner, which was currently uncontested. And they had a very interesting strategy, utilizing the characters a ton. They ended up grabbing a bounty from here after they had looted up, and then pushing straight into the weather station and picking up these three eliminations with a really, really nice pinch. This gives you 200 gold each, enough to upgrade which you can actually do with kit at Catty Corner. However, they didn't stop here. They continued to loot down that kind of southeast corner of the map, going through the other characters here far to that kind of southeast side, picking up more loot. So once they had left Catty Corner, they all had purple ARs, be it either scars or heavy assault rifles, and they also all had purple shotguns as well. They positioned themselves good in this third zone and then ended up dancing to get the sixth zone very successfully, may I add. In endgame, they played this really nice mid-ground layer as well. They weren't a low-ground team, they weren't a high-ground team, but they put this hard focus on mid-ground layering. And this is why they were so consistent. These guys didn't manage to pick up a single victory royale, however they had two seconds and two fourths. And this is what really comes with this mid-ground kind of layer. If you're able to consistently find yourself a layer that doesn't have a lot of opponents on it, you'll be able to rotate in the endgame relatively freely and pick up eliminations where you need to. They also had this really nice bouncer play that you can see, almost reminiscent of using the short launch pad. They noticed they were on a really high up layer, put a ramp over their head, little bounce pad below, and it just knocks you straight down without sending you up. Something I don't think I've actually seen before on EU or NA East, but I could be wrong. I don't really think this game was winnable because the team on height was playing this really well. They all still had a ton of ammo. They had the RPG, but placing second for our team was really, really good. And this is kind of what happens when you're on that mid-ground layer. You use a ton of materials to get yourself in safely. You keep getting those top end positions, but a lot of the times you don't have that loot to pick up the Victorial because the height team has it so consistent, unless you manage to pick up the RPG team. But overall, really, really great play from these guys, in particular putting a huge focus into those characters to consistently get them fantastic loot, and then great positioning for that mid-ground layer. Moving over to the OCE region, which was won by Jinx, Alec, and Worthy, which should surprise pretty much no one. They've moved up their drop spot this season to landing Dirty Docks rather than landing Sweaty Sands where they were landing last season, and we can see exactly why once they've taken this early game fight. You get the bounty and win relatively easy, and this allows them to upgrade their weapons and have fantastic loot leaving Dirty Docks. Very, very similar to what we just watched on Asia as well with the team landing in Catty Corner. Now they pull the first zone that moves relatively to the east side, so they get very, very early high ground. This is actually very reminiscent of their playstyle that they did back in a video when I watched them in Chapter 2, Season 3, when they have a split high ground early on. Notice how Worthy takes height on the pylon, whereas Alec and Jinx take height on the hill. This means pretty much as long as the zone pulls in their direction, they have the two highest points on the map already colored to guarantee them high ground. After they do the guaranteed dance for third zone, they obviously pull it as well. Fourth zone then pulls a little bit east of Alec and Jinx, so Alec goes down and builds up early, whereas Jinx stays behind and then pressures teams who are trying to go over him and makes sure he makes a last minute rotate to ensure that no teams can build up and they keep that level of high ground. At this point, Worthy is just maintaining the high ground on the pylon, which is relatively close to the center of fourth zone. At this point, they have a huge amount of materials. However, the fifth zone pulls very to the south. So despite the fact they've put all this effort into claiming the two best high ground spots, they don't get that good RNG with the fifth zone. So Alec bouncers ahead, but unfortunately gets completely beamed out. We won't really see it because unfortunately there is some server lag. However, he gets beamed out at this point, so they lose it down to a 2v2. However, Jinx and Worthy both keep the high ground on the next pylon, which is currently in zone, which they were able to do because they secured that high ground so early, it allowed them to bounce over and just maintain it. Now the zones keep pulling south pretty much every single zone from here on. And because it then starts to pull up this very, very large hill, this really benefits them on high ground because the teams below are using a ton of materials to protect themselves as they build up, whereas Worthy and Jinx can just use a simple ramp to just get themselves up, saving tons of materials and keeping high ground. Once these hills start to move up, you really have to be paying attention to these zones because these are horrible. Tons of players get eliminated on this, and as you can see, they just consistently keep high ground from here on out, spray down, pick up the eliminations, and then eventually drop down to pick up the Victory Royale as well. With the amazing loot they got from Dirty Dogs and some good RNG in terms of the first and second zones, they put themselves in a great position on those high ground spots. So pretty much wherever RNG was on their side in terms of third and fourth zones, they already had the high ground claimed. 
even though they had some bad fifth RNG, they committed to that high ground and used a ton of materials to ensure they kept it, and then from then on out, won the game. For Middle East, our winners there were Cookie, Phantom, and Nile. These guys absolutely popped off and had a 30 elimination game in a round four. Absolutely insane amount of eliminations to have in one game. Their average eliminations per game were almost double that of the team in second after the end of the tournament. So these guys kind of popped off a little bit. In the Middle East, we're going to have to have a little conversation because Colosseum is where these guys landed and they also managed to get Risky Reels uncontested too. Now, if we look at the map, you can see that the bridge to the north and the triple chest spawn was all uncontested as well. And this is the same thing that happened last week. I'm not sure why center mid map is not contested on Middle East, but this keeps happening. Some good Middle East team, please land here. It has great loot, best rotations in the game. Come on. So again, they just like the previous two teams, they popped a bounty and rotated all the way over to Sweaty Sands to pick up this fight, which they did extremely aggressively. After this, yet again, this team went to upgrade and all had purple shotguns, two of them actually deciding to take purple chargers, which would impacted huge damage. And from then on out, honestly, they just rolled through the entire lobby. They applied continual pressure over and over again to their opponents, because one of the problems is that a lot of the people in this are a little more scared to fight. They're boxed up, they're trying to play a little bit more passive, and as soon as you aggress them, play ultra aggressive, you can just get into their box and run through them no problem, and that's exactly what this team did. With the huge advantage they had with having purple shotguns and above because they had already upgraded, the huge amount of loot they had, and all of the heals, combined with the incredible aggression that they had, they just rolled through most of the lobby, in particular moving into endgame, and then Kuki in the endgame had an absolute pop off by just gold tacking every single player alive on low ground which is great to see so a great combination of upgrading weapons to get better loot than everyone else then combining that with just great end game pop off eu was won by falconly skite and robabs and these guys dropped at misty meadows they ended up disengaging relatively early because the disco house and the house around it was uncontested which they found out from game one this gave them a ton more loot to work with however the problem is they didn't really have that much metal so they ended up on rotate going through slurpy swamps, which ended up being in the edge of third zone, which really isn't a great swamp to be on. However, they could re-harvest out the materials here and keep them going through the end game. Since they'd managed to re-harvest these materials, once they picked up an elimination in that mid game, they could fully tarp over to it using those materials to then grab the further loot that they got from this fight. If they didn't get that extra metal just from harvesting there, this probably wouldn't have been possible to get this loot at all for them. After this, the harpoon was absolutely critical in their gameplay. Skite using this over five times to harpoon different loot in different points of the game. Once they'd rotated into the fifth zone, they got themselves onto a really nice dead side edge, noticing they're not sitting on the edge, which they could have, but they decided to go a little bit further in, as this keeps them away from other players. At this edge, this gave their next rotate very, very easy, and they consistently stayed on a good mid to low ground layer, staying roughly two layers above low ground, which gave them plenty of space to work with. Again, the harpoon came in clutch as Sky consistently harpooned up lots and lots of loot over and over again. Because of this harpoon, he had loot going through all of the moving zones, and towards the end, they knew they had enough loot to go up for high ground. Because of this, they took height very successfully and then won the game during the heal off from this. Overall, this harpoon came in so clutch and was 100% the reason for the success of this game. Brazil was won by Lasers, DMD, and Malone, and these guys won three games in a row, all with over 10 eliminations. They dropped in Colosseum and they were actually contested, but bullied the teams off spawn. They really took advantage of the zero point stones in the area because they could consistently get ahead of the zone and rotate early to the dead side, which was around Holly. So they got into Holly, farmed out a building, but unfortunately didn't get the third zone, so they rotated to the center of third, again an extremely common thing that we see. A supply drop actually came down near them and they bounce padded over to the supply drop. Now what you gotta remember is this may look like a waste of a bounce pad, however guaranteeing you get that supply drop will give you three more bounce pads, so you're a net two positive. They then just threw all of the heals back to the original base to ensure they could share them back on this original point. Now their end game was great, they were not focused on high ground at all, this was yet again another team who was focused on a really low to mid ground layer, consistently just picking up eliminations as they went. However when it got to the end of that second moving zone and towards the start of the 8th zone, this is when they started looking up. And as you can see, this was an issue of the team on height, over peaking way too much and this allows laser to get a great snipe shot. And those bouncers we talked about earlier, this is an easy way to secure the high ground because of this. From then on, it was just consistent pressuring down the opponents down below and Lasers has all of those white heals and manages to win the heal off. If you're on the high ground, please don't do what this opponent did and completely over peak. You have to be really, really careful of the angles that you're peeking at. 
Over on NA East, it was won by Class, D-Roller, and Colazzo, and these guys absolutely dominated the region. They performed so well in every single game, being incredibly consistent. They dropped a Kai corner and completely demolished Dictate's team who landed here too, to the point that they had five games that they placed 32nd, and one where they placed 29th. Potentially, new drop spot required, boys. The secret to their success is the big chill and upgrading, yet again. Now obviously the big chill was not the only reason they were good, these guys were good in whatever situation they were put in, high ground, mid ground, low ground, these guys were popping off and being incredibly consistent. But in game 2 they managed to get the big chill, which is the snowball launcher that shoots through builds, if you notice it gives them icy feet. And why is this so good? Well it's because you can't walk up ramps, which means if you're on high ground you can't take high ground, and if you shoot it on the floors of the people who are on high ground, they just fall off height. Overall, it's a hilarious gun. It's, you know, this be real probably pretty busted, but they use this to their success hugely. It only costs 400 gold bars, and I know you can't see the gold bars on the menu, but what they did was obviously that early game elimination, they just spoke to Kit instantly, got that bounty, and then as soon as they did that, they had enough to upgrade, and also at the same time, they could grab the big chill as well. Took that high ground, anyone who contested them, they just shot it at them, and it was it. The height was free. They also used a ton of peppers because they're at Catty Corner, there was 10 there, and they were constantly using peppers all the way through the moving zones, which was a really, really great idea because it allows them to keep a lot more distance and space between each other and cover a lot more space on high ground, but at the same time, they can catch up to each other if they really need it. Now, any West, I'm not going to actually focus too much on because I'm actually going to do a full video on Arkham and why I think he's the world's best IGL right now, but one thing I will note is about this peak. Earlier on Brazil, I mentioned how much the player on height was overpeaking, he got sniped, and this was the downfall of their match. But if you take a look at the way Arkham does this on any west, where he places floors and then places a floor out to his one side, it creates on height a right hand peak corner that he can look down on. This means that anyone that can see him, he can see. This means he knows if someone's aiming a sniper at him easily at this point. So he can continually pressure the teams down below, but at the same time, the only the ones that he can see can pressure him back, completely avoiding any opportunities for them to be sniped. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace.